<laughs> so who are the ancient ones? Um, according to the Hopi and the Navajo records, they were gods and goddesses that were on earth and somehow disappeared. And in their uh, silent meetings among themselves, they are saying, where are they? Because, you know, they've had specific um, prophecies that the Hopis particularly have carried that have said that certain things would indicate that the world was let's call it in trouble, that it was, we were entering times of very dramatic transformation and of course this was heading into 2012. Mm -hmm. They also said that the gods and goddesses would return to prevent some of these things and so they're saying where are they? And I have been on a mission to awaken these original beings, and I'll explain why they are called that, to remind them of who they are so that they can arise and through self-government they can prevent the cataclysms of 2012. And that has been my mission. So they're in um, physical form? They have so long pretended to be human for multiple reasons. They were isolated, they were alone, they were usually rejected by humans as strange or otherworldly, and they've tried so hard to be acceptable, to be part of humanity with an incredible pain in their hearts knowing this is just not who I am. But they couldn't understand who they were. They have so long pretended to be human for multiple reasons. They were isolated, they were alone, they were usually rejected by humans as strange or otherworldly, and they've tried so hard to be acceptable, to be part of humanity with an incredible pain in their hearts knowing this is just not who I am. But they couldn't understand who they were. And my teachings have been a little bit like bait, in that they are so esoteric so completely out of the ballpark of what new age would be, they're really new paradigm. Um, and uh, humans come to these meetings initially and they go, whoa, this is not for me, this is not comfortable. I am taken into the unknowable and I prefer to be in the known. But then there are those who hear it and they know their home. Some of them say to me, I don't understand much of what you're saying, but I can feel in my heart this is where I belong. So it's like a sorting mechanism and lately those original ones who have lived in pain amongst humans, knowing they're not part of the insanity that for them is insanity, they are the ones that gravitate towards the work. And more and more in my classes, those are the only ones that are coming. So my job has not been to accumulate many students. It's to find the God beings that have forgotten who they are and remind them of their mastery. And so the way that I teach is different. It's not just a lecture. It's an interaction. Because in my heart, I know that what we've come to do each time, they have carried the keys to for eons. So they teach the class as much as I do. So the people that are attracted to your, uh, to your lectures, to your work, are the people, are you saying, uh, just yeah. these are the God beings, perhaps? They I are mostly the God beings, because God beings gravitate towards that which is not already known. Mm. Most of the world's wisdom, most of the, the world's um, teachings on how to be a good person, how to do this, and heal, etc., all these various things, come from within the fishbowl. Mm -hmm. which is the information of the known. Mm -hmm. No matter how much we study the ancient philosophers and the ancient scripts and, te and testaments and so on, they still are wisdom from within the fishbowl. And for most of humanity, that's their comfort zone. They, they say they seek for truth, but they seek that which confirms what they already know. Um, it, there's very few people that feel comfortable um, being taken to a place where everything you thought you know falls away day by day. 
truth is a journey, it isn't a stagnant pond. No matter how much we study the ancient philosophers and the ancient scripts and, te and testaments and so on, they still are wisdom from within the fishbowl. And for most of humanity, that's their comfort zone. They, they say they seek for truth, but they seek that which confirms what they already know. Um, it, there's very few people that feel comfortable um, being taken to a place where everything you thought you know falls away day by day. Truth is a journey, it isn't a stagnant pond. Mm. Now what is that job? The that job is, is um, now usually they gravitate towards things like yourselves that are for the benefit of humanity. But that is really not their job. Mm. That is their primary job. This is absolutely a secondary job. What their primary job is, is to reclaim their godhood and to live in the fullest capacity is always everyone's highest calling. And the, f the fullest capacity for God beings, it's so far beyond the norm that teachers of the known cannot show them what it is. The, f the fullest capacity for God beings, it's so far beyond the norm that Teachers of the known cannot show them what it is. And so we, we're receiving this journey straight from the infinite. Because there isn't a place we can turn and say, please tell me how to live. It is so far beyond. And that is the highest calling for a God being in the flesh. And so we, we're receiving this journey straight from the infinite because there isn't a place we can turn and say, please tell me how to live. It is so far beyond. And that is the highest calling for a God being in the flesh, to, to live their Godhood. Because um, when each of us lives our highest truth, no matter what level we're on, that is the greatest gift we can give the planet. Everything changes. It's a journey. So it's a never ending journey of becoming all that you can be. Mm -hmm. There is no arrival point. And so how do you know when you're living everything to the fullest capacity? That divine discontent, the, the yearning goes away. That shows you you've got your feet on the journey. But there is no point of arrival. It just becomes a journey that's more and more glorious. The place, when a God being remembers who they are, they actually metamorphose the fields around the body. The body itself metamorphoses. Um, aging starts to reverse. Um, in fact, there's just this new rebirthing that happens periodically. You wake up in the morning and things were there yesterday in the form of wrinkles and stuff. It's just not there today. Or your body has reshaped itself. So there is a whole fullness to this life. Um, but there is no more holy place, whether it's in a street with prostitution or in a bar, there's no more holy place than where a God being lives their truth. So wherever you are, you're home. Frequency can shatter a glass. Frequency in a, in a circle shattered the walls of Jericho. And what we are saying by this is what is the best way we can serve? When the gods remember who they are and start to live these principles of godhood, what happens is that they shatter the walls of the matrix that has decreed that suffering is the way for progress. That opposition is what causes growth. Because if we shatter that matrix by the frequency of divine compassion, there's a whole new subquantum particle that creates this reality. It's one in which light and frequency are joined. They're not like the little subquantum particles are like little wobbly crosses of light and frequency. They're not separated. They become a little sphere. It's a whole new sub-quantum field. And um, as the, this frequency goes, it shatters the matrix. And it sets humanity free. 
what is the best way we can serve? When the gods remember who they are and start to live these principles of godhood, what happens is that they shatter the walls of the matrix that has decreed that suffering is the way for progress. That opposition is what causes growth. Because if we shatter that matrix by the frequency of divine compassion, there's a whole new subquantum particle that creates this reality. It's one in which light and frequency are joined. They're not like the little subquantum particles are like little wobbly crosses of light and frequency. They're not separated. They become a s little sphere. It's a whole new subquantum field. And um, as the, this frequency goes, it shatters the matrix and it sets humanity free. There was an opening between the seven fields of perception, seven layers of life, of which shamanism is the lowest one. And there was an opening between it, allowing for the first time that we can access and live from all seven fields at once. And that it, the walls of Jericho are the membranes that separated these layers of life.